Alright everybody, I'm gonna try to talk to the camera and not the computer because everybody's over here, but you're actually out there. Um, good afternoon, Sunday afternoon, I guess it could be evening where you're at. Um, it could be morning where you're at, I don't know. Uh, but thanks for being here everybody. This is the May monthly interview and meetup. I was really uh, worried for a second that I wasn't going to be able to do it this month because I was getting really, really busy. And I hit up John kind of last minute and I was like, if John can't do this one date, then I'm going to have to not do it this month. And then I didn't say anything and John responded to me very quickly and said the exact date that I could do it on. <laughs> so I felt like it was just, it was serendipity. I had to do it. We had to get together. It was written in the stars and here we are. John Person, and uh, your host, Gabriel Hall Rodriguez here. Um, I'm going to read John's bio real quick, in case you haven't read it already. It's a perfect length, not too long, not too short, and we'll talk about all of his cool musical things that he does, or hear him play. So here we go. John Person. John Person is an accomplished player of three musical instruments, the piano, the piano accordion, and the Russian chromatic accordion, the bayan. Person engages audience with a variety of styles, including classical jazz ragtime, American standards and Broadway, Argentine tangos, Russian gypsy music, plus French, Italian, and other international popular favorites. For the last 20 years, he has been a steady entertainer aboard many of the major cruise ship lines, such as Holland, America, Seaborn, and Princess, just to name a few. Person has performed extensively in ensembles with virtuoso violinists, balalaika artists, and opera singers. I love that word balalaika. It's yeah. just it's kind of bouncy. <laughs> he yeah, also sister. exactly. He also arranges music for accordion and piano in many styles with string quartet accompaniment, and frequently performs these arrangements for community concerts. This is something I need to that we're really hoping to hear today. Is in his featured performances, he blends commentary and anecdotes with the music to create an entertaining and satisfying listener experience. Are we going to get any of that today, John? We'll see. Oh gosh. I'm on the edge of my seat. Whenever back on land, he performs for a variety of venues such as arts festivals, country clubs, churches, community concerts, retirement communities, and the South Florida condo circuit. Person studied at jazz at Cornish Institute here in Seattle and did extensive general music studies graduating from Seattle Community College and the University of Washington. He's appeared in concert tours and five-star hotels in North America and Europe, appeared in numerous musical theater productions, and spent four years performing at Walt Disney World Epcot in Orlando, Florida. This guy has been all over the place. John, thanks so much for being here. I get around. <laughs> That's a good thing. You're working, man. I mean, this is what it's all about. Is like, uh, how can we, how can we uh, show people like all the different ways that you can be a working accordionist in, in, in today's world and around the world and all the different ways that there are to do that. And I think that you're certainly an example of somebody who's, this is your living, this is what you do. You play right. accordion, you play music. Well, I get, um, I, I have like probably, I guess, five different main venues I do for professional music. And usually I get known in one of them, but not by everybody for all of them. So I've done a lot of solo accordion. I was uh, known as a Norwegian accordionist at Epcot at their Norway Pavilion. Sweet. They didn't know I could do anything else. I worked with a lot of violinists for a long time, accordion, violin, duos, doing all sorts of you know, different styles from classical to Broadway. I worked a lot with balalaika, uh, virtuosos from Russia. Um, so I was known as a Russian musician. And then, uh, and then uh, I... Uh, I was working on cruise ships only with accordion to start with, and it was usually in a duo situation, accordion and violin or accordion and balalaika. But then I wanted to, to uh, expand uh, my horizons or my opportunities, and I already played classical piano, but I didn't know how to play any of the commercial music I played on the accordion on the piano. Even though I played uh, piano accordion, I could easily transfer these arrangements to the piano with my right hand, but my left hand didn't know what to do. So for years and years I thought about doing cocktail piano because I could play classical piano and nothing else. So I would watch piano players in uh, you know nightclubs, restaurants, to see what they did with their left hand. And finally, after many years, I started uh, 
finally pick it up and then ended up getting a job sight on scene on a cruise ship. They'd never heard me. I just sent them my resume saying I played the piano and the accordion and I played at all these places and they assumed I played the piano at all these places, but I didn't, just the accordion. But anyway, they hired me and I went and took a fake book with me and started playing piano and learning all these standards and uh, gradually adding to it. So now most of the time I play piano on cruise ships, but I always bring the accordion along and sometimes they want me to do the accordion for special things and I try to feature it as much as possible with string quartets that happen to be on the ship. Sometimes they're trios, sometimes they're duos. Wonderful. Some kind of strings. I love it. Well, would you mind playing us a tune to get us started here? Okay, I'll uh, play you uh, something uh, just uh, straight uh, uh, accordion. Actually, it would, it would be on the bayan only. I don't play it on the piano accordion. It's a Russian bayan, uh, what I would call, you know, uh, Soviet uh, 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 arrangement of a folk tune called Ach Tinochenka means the, the night, or oh, the little night, I guess would be the translation. Alrighty. So, and I wanted to say it's in a semi-classical, uh, contemporary classical style. playing man thank you so uh i didn't grow up playing accordion i was sort of i was a convert from playing piano well that's what i was going to ask i was wondering yeah when, and when so you started i started playing accordion uh just about a little over 10 years ago hmm. and um at what age 20 mm -hmm. 20 um, 20 that's when i started playing accordion that's late but um piano since uh, since like a little kid like yeah. seven um and so i'm always like i feel like uh, although i'm like very into all things accordion i don't i'm still like learning a lot and um and one of the things that's like fascinating to me still because i haven't spent any time doing it is the chromatic systems and um i know how they work i, I think but um, why did you choose to play the bion uh, well, my, 
father was from Sweden and my mother was Norwegian. And in those countries, 80%, 90% of the accordions are chromatic keyboard accordions, which is similar to a bayan, in fact, but Russians will tell you that that's not a, a, a bayan. Bayan has a different shape and construction of the box, but the keyboard is about the same. Mm -hmm. So I was very familiar with the uh, chromatic keyboard, but I didn't play it until I was 21 when uh, I was a member of the Seattle Russian Balalaika Orchestra. And so that's when I was hearing more about the bayan. I had heard about it before. And then there was a woman in the orchestra who played accordion, and she had come back from a trip to the Soviet Union, and she bought this little bayan, three-row bayan. And uh, she said, I just don't have time to practice it. Why don't you buy it for me? And so I did. And it was actually really good, uh, a really good instrument, especially for a small one. It had a great sound. And uh, of course, at first, I couldn't play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Uh, yeah. And um, so it uh, just took me quite a while to get so I could play simple melodies. But with, within a month, I was able to learn a fairly complicated arrangement. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like maybe like someone who doesn't speak a language and you, you learn a poem in that language. You memorized it, but you really don't know the language. But anyway, I did. I learned it, and then I just kept adding more and more tunes. And to this day, I still have some gaps in my knowledge about, uh, about the chromatic keyboard and bayans. But I figure it works. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Uh, not every, not, I think, I don't always think it's like about being, um, you know, trying to know everything about everything. It's the same thing with me and the piano. I play classical piano, but I don't really, really feel like I am a piano player. I play it, but I'm not as comfortable with the piano, left hand especially, as people who grew up playing the piano. Sure. Right, that's definitely, well, I mean, similar thing, but in reverse for the accordion, people that play piano growing up and then go to the accordion, it's a whole other... Most whole piano players, when they take up the uh, accordion as an adult, they can never figure out the left hand. Mm -hmm. They never become comfortable with it, but obviously you did become comfortable. I am barely hanging in there, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do, I do like it and I do think it makes sense. I yeah. think all the systems are fun. It's like a little puzzle, you know, yeah. it's like this machine and musical and it's... It's just great. Do you play Stradella left hand, or are you playing oh, free yeah. bass? No, I play Stradella. In fact, um, I I kind of play two free bass systems because my piano accordion was Italian, is Italian, and it has the opposite system from the bayan. Oh, okay. So the low notes are at the top, mm -hmm. high notes at the bottom. Right. But on the bayan, the low notes are at the bottom, and the high notes are at the top. So when I got my bayan, it had this opposite system. I thought, well, I guess I just can't use that, and I tried to see if there was any way I could switch it around, but no, that was impossible. So for years, I didn't really touch it, and then eventually I started adding a few things, you know, that I could do on it, but I, I'm not a great free bass player in either system, so I don't do it that much. I'm not a free bass player in any system, <laughs> but I, I'd like to be one day. Yeah. I'm getting there. Me too. <laughs> and... How, how, so you're playing on a, on a 3X. Um, is that This is the box that you take on most of your... This is the one I travel with. For one thing, it's only uh, 18 pounds, so it's half the weight of the Bayan I had, which was about 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. my, my piano accordion had an extended keyboard and a free bass converter system, so it was heavy, uh, about 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and I even did strolling with the Bayan for a while, and it is so heavy, and it sits more over to the left so it really torques your back i don't know how anybody and, uh, would be strolling with that yeah i had to i mean i could do it but i would i would starting to get a dead spot in my leg and i always would tell people that i used to be much taller before i started strolling <laughs> i feel that way too I, I you know even just carrying the thing on like a like a backpack like a gig bag you mm -hmm. know it's just constantly squishing it's kind of, it's your like, body it's like being a, it's, in a way it's like being a weightlifter you know you got to wear a weight belt you know mm -hmm. one of those uh the yeah. ones that go around the small of your right. back. <laughs> well, that's cool. I, I think, uh, you know, the roll, the three X seems like it seems like the four X's and the, and like those sizes are, are a lot more popular than the eights. I, well, I thought, I mean, it would be nice to have the, the top of the model, a top of the line model, but I figured you really, I mean, these produce as much 
oomph as the big ones. It may not have as many sounds, mm -hmm. but it still has more sounds than I need. Sure. And I actually don't use the instrumental sounds. I only use the accordion sounds, except I add the string bass, orchestral string bass to gotcha. some things. Because I want my accordion to sound like an accordion. Sure. I don't want it to sound like a fake clarinet or a sure. uh, saxophone or a trumpet. Yeah, uh, I think that... It's good, you know, if you know how to do it, but uh, to make it effective, I'm just not uh, focused on that. Maybe sometime I will be, I don't know. There's a great um, new organization called Great Ideas, um, and it's by... it's. Uh, um, Jonah Tolley and I think it's Mike Soloway. Um, it's a it's like a basically um, the knack, but with sort of more focused on digital accordions. Mm. So the Rollins and whatever other digital systems that people are playing, and um, they have a lot of interesting stuff on there. But it's way over, mm. way over my sort of comfort level with mm -hmm. the Roland. I don't really know enough about it. But I think we're gonna we're gonna get some of those uh, some of those Evos. I think sometime soon. Uh, in the states, I'm not sure where they're going to be, but uh, I think they're going to be around. I'd like to play one of those. I'm not sure what that is, but oh, it's a it's like a Roland. It's a Bugari, but it's like a I think they have a couple in Europe, and I think Corey Pesaturo plays one. Oh. And it's like a Roland inside of an accordion box, uh -huh. so it has like a, a real accordion keyboard okay. and stuff. Uh -huh. But they're pretty neat. They kind of they um, I'm curious. Yeah, I tried many years ago. I tried a quarter box. Joe Potosa Sr. lent me one for a month, uh, I mean for a week, so I could try it out. And it was interesting, but I just wasn't into it. You know, I still like my acoustic accordion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as long as I can keep playing it, I'll be okay. Um, well, I'd like to ask you some more questions about kind of your, your, your work and where you've, where you've been to and your... Um, and, and just how you got into this life of playing this... Uh, in the cruise ship world or just like you know being a working musician but i'd like to hear another tune if you got one sure let's do it um i'll play you one with one of the tracks uh that uh, i one of my uh, big things in fact my main focus right now is arranging for the string quartet and accordion so i'm i spend a lot of time doing these arrangements modifying them for the accordion and the string quartet and then uh, you know, you can you can make a sound file from the music notation file of the arrangements. So once I get the arrangement I like, I just push a button and it turns it into a sound file. I put it on the USB stick and into the back of the accordion here, and it plays. And then I can play along with it so I can have the string quartet with me and be able to practice along with them when they're not around. Uh -huh. But... Uh, doesn't have quite the same effect or the same power as an actual string quartet. I had a concert just last week uh, with a, a real string quartet, and it was wonderful. So uh, I'll play you a piece that uh, we, I would say it's of, of the few videos I have on YouTube. This has gotten the most likes, hits, favorites, whatever. It's a beautiful piece of uh, music by a French composer named uh, Gabriel, 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 yes, Foray. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, I just love it. It's known as the Pavan. Oh, yes. And uh, so I feature the string quartet as much as possible, you know, equally with the accordion. And um, I have to get the right settings here. Of course. It takes a lot of fiddling. So, what was I going to say? Yeah, oh, and I, I also tell the audiences that they may, re may recognize this piece if they're a fan of Barbara Streisand, because she sang this in one of her albums called Classical Barbara. Oh, all right. Yeah. Lovely. That was the first time I heard it. I, I thought, I'm, not, I'm not a big Barbara Streisand fan, but I just like this piece of music. <laughs> so, let's see here if I got my setting correct.
All right, John. Nice work. Thank you. I think that I would like it if you turned your, if you could just give us the rest of the volume that you have on your accordion, if you could just turn it the rest of the way up, sure. I think that'd be cool. I just think that if I'm like, I want to hear a little more, <laughs> probably they're probably like that too. Um, what are some of your, so as a, as an accordionist, you know, <clears throat> there's not a lot of like original, you know, I mean, classical music works, you know, that's, yeah. that's not normal for, right. they're not written for the accordion. Right. So like that being said, what are some of your, like, um, I mean, who are some of your favorite composers that you think their music for accordion yeah that like tends yeah. to fit you know well for the accordion or the way that they orchestrate or whatever the reason is that that appeals to you to play it on the accordion are you talking about composers who compose for the accordion or other no. composers for the accordion other okay, composers yeah. that you'd like that you that uh i do a lot of bach js bach and uh baroque music works really well for an accordion because it's like a little pipe organ that sits in your lap mm -hmm. okay so he wrote a lot of a lot of uh organ music and uh, I did some Chopin but I prefer it on the piano I mean it's you have to pick and choose I I used to play the fantasy impromptu on the piano accordion people used to ask me where's the pedal on the accordion I hear the pedal but it's mm -hmm. but still I, I think Chopin doesn't work so well for accordion um, and it just it just you have to pick and choose individually every case is unique um, it depends on how you know how much adapt adaptation you have to do. Whether or not you're doing a solo, when you're working with a violin, it's easier to do orchestral stuff. And one of the comments I used to get when it was just violin and accordion was, "Wow, you guys sound like a whole orchestra." So now when I do it with a quartet, they really go, "Wow, you sound like a whole orchestra." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tchaikovsky, yeah, the 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 some of the Tchaikovsky uh, ballet music really works well for accordion and violin, um, or even just accordion alone. Um, who else? Mm, Dvorak. There were some nice uh, Dvorak Slavonic dances mm. work really well for accordion and violin. Um, accordion alone. Um, I like to play it for myself, uh, for audiences, not so much uh, as a solo, other than, like I said, Bach. Mm. Do you have any favorites of composers you think work well for a quarter? I don't really play classical music enough mm -hmm. to have a favorite, yeah. you know, if I play some classical music on the accordion, it's probably because I was, it was like an audition piece or yeah. something that I had to learn. I but. used to do contemporary pieces for accordion when I was studying with the teacher, you know, pieces by Ole Schmidt, Torbjörn Lundqvist, um, Paul Creston. They're nice, but they don't really please the general audience. Sure. Well, that's, I think, um, I was, I was going to study at the Royal Danish Conservatory. At least I considered it. They asked me to, and then they, they, uh, that the, the teacher at the time, he really just focused on works written for the accordion because he said we need our own repertoire but that you know meant mostly contemporary music and I just wasn't really interested in that. Mm -hmm. The Russian composers though, the Russian Soviet composers, some of them are interesting. There's one I like in particular called Zolotaryev. Really heavy. Okay. Yeah, yeah very uh, dynamically heavy music. Okay. He committed suicide. Whoa, okay. <laughs> it's heavy people. It's heavy. <laughs> But uh, really interesting music. So you're a fan of the uh, the Russian? I mean, like you have like the Russian system, you know? You like? Yeah, I am. I'm very big on Russian music. I love for piano. I love Rachmaninoff. Uh, of course, I said Tchaikovsky. Some of the other composers, Glier. Um, can't think of the other names right now, but um, there are a bunch of them I like. Sweet. Well, because I think I think we're going to talk a lot about. Um, about work stuff you want to hit us with one more tune before we dig into some some okay. more uh this juicier I'll, material i'll play you one of the balalaika arrangements which i turned into a duo arrangement from a trio it was originally written for bayan balalaika and domra which is a russian instrument that's kind of similar to the mandolin okay and i worked it into a 
like I said, a duo arrangement. It's called Yablochka, which means the little apple, and that's the name of the song in uh, English is usually translated as the little, uh, no, as the Russian sailor's dance. And you may recognize the melody. There was a famous um, Russian composer in the 1800s named Glier, and he created a symphonic work, and he borrowed this melody, which was a folk melody, he borrowed it and put it in his Russian sailor's dance. But the, the basic Russian um, folk melody is called Yablochka, which means the little apple. Where's the vodka? Yeah. Where is the vodka? Um, burning. That was fun. That was really fun. Yeah. Gosh. Um, it's not my arrangement. It's a great arrangement. Oh, it was just fantastic. I'm going to scoot your mic a little closer to you. Having people say they're having a hard time hearing you. Okay. So I'm just going to get it as close as I can while still getting it out of the All way right. and not <clears throat> in your face and stuff. And that looks like it's pretty good right there. So um, everybody says nice things. I do have a question from Alan Nisbet. Um, it says, balalaika suggestions, or balalaika and accordion arrangements, uh, any suggestions? It's very hard to find them. How come? Well, most of them were pub published during the Soviet era. Oh, okay. And, um, 
you had to go to the Russian bookstore in San Francisco to buy them if you were going to buy them anywhere, or maybe in New York, or you had to know some Russian person who just happened to have some. Um, uh, oh, you can go online, actually. Nowadays, probably it's easier to find. But uh, I, I mean, I collected a whole bunch a long time ago. I haven't been looking for any in a long, long time. I just happen to have a lot of it. Any uh, composers that you looked at that do good arrangements of those things that you might recommend to people like to check out? There are all these collections uh, that uh, feature, you know, com uh, different arrangers, different accord bionists that will do arrangements. Um, there's a fellow named uh, Igor. He was a student of mine for a while, and uh, he lives in Bellevue. He's a Microsoft computer programmer. He has a huge collection of uh, of that kind of music, and uh, maybe he could, uh, you know, point you to some sources. Uh, Igor Shoish Shoish Tashivili. It's a really long Georgian name. He's Russian, but his name is Georgian. Um, later on, I could uh, give you his contact information. Okay, cool. We can get we can get that worked out. Do I have any other questions? I forgot. Let's see. Uh, nope. Everybody's just asking me to move the microphone closer so they can hear you. And uh, so let's talk about how did you get started on on cruise ships? I mean, what was your what was your decision like? I assume you were working in town and I was about uh, 27, 28 years old and I was reading the Seattle newspaper one day and there was a blurb in a column about some local singer who was spending her summer working as a nightclub singer on a Russian ship sailing out of Vancouver to Alaska and I thought, "Oh, that sounds like fun." So the violinist and I who I worked with at the time, we thought we were going to investigate this and he uh, managed to get hired himself with a classical trio for a one cruise on Holland America line later that year and then he got us hired the next year as a accordion violin duo on another Holland America ship and we did that it was only three weeks long we went Seattle through the Panama Canal to Miami stopping along the way in California Mexico Panama the Caribbean and so I was sold on the idea. I wanted to, we wanted to do it again, but uh, couldn't get hired for another five years. And, and uh, I kept telling the agents what I actually did, and they said, no, no, that doesn't sound interesting. And so finally I called one, one of the agents I talked to a year before, and I told him we did what he said we should do. And he said, oh, yeah, that sounds like what we would like. Yeah, I think we could use you. And they brought us on the ship and we did exactly what we always do and people said oh i love this you're great <laughs> classic <laughs> that's the classic you're the best ones we ever had <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. people i mean i won't say that people don't know what they want all the times yeah. but there are those instances where you so then uh, we continued to do them off and on over the years um i would worked at disney world for uh, in the meantime as a norwegian folk accordionist and that's another story because I didn't really want to do that, and they, they contacted me. They got my name, and they said they wanted me to do Norwegian folk music eight hours a day, five days a week. And I said, well, you know, that's, I know the music. I play it with family and friends on, on, on occasion. It's fun, but the thought of doing it every day, all day long, sounds kind of boring. And the entertainment director said, well, yeah, it sounds boring to me. How about if we give you more money? <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up staying, and, but I got so sick and tired of Norwegian folk music. Then I, as soon as I quit, I immediately got on another cruise as a solo classical artist on accordion. And then off and on over the years. And finally, about 1997, that's when I started playing piano. And then that led to a lot more work, pretty steady work ever since on mostly Princess Line, but other lines as well. Cool. Man, you just like dove right in. Actually, on Princess, they wanted me to, they really wanted the accordion too. That was what sold them. They wanted the piano and the accordion. Hmm. We did a lot of strolling, but now strolling is dining room strolling has kind of fallen out of favor. It's mm -hmm. not in style anymore, and they don't really want that. So, uh, I'm hired mainly as a piano player, but I bring the accordion along wherever I go, and sometimes I, I use it, and sometimes I don't. Sure. Well, it's always good to have a double, you know, and it's always mm -hmm. it's also great on paper too, you know. Yeah. For getting gigs. Have you ever done dining room strolling? No, not I mean, I've done a couple of gigs playing mm -hmm. some like parties, strolling, but it's really not my. I prefer to sit. Yeah, and uh, it can be fun because of the interaction with the people that you meet. Sure, um, 
but you have to know a lot of songs and you're always going to get requests that you don't know no matter how many songs you don't know someone's going to ask you for something and you say i'm sorry i don't know that and they'll say you don't know that yeah <laughs> how could you not know that <laughs> there's a lot of songs out there ma'am yeah. um yeah. <laughs> and uh i don't know that one well that's great i mean I, so this is sort of similar to how a lot of my friends who i have a few friends who came out of college and worked on cruise ships and they kind of they talk about it like that They're like you know i got done i was playing i was this old and I saw an ad and I thought that might be fun and then like you know you kind of decide how long you want to mm-hmm. stay in that world but this is like a big um, I mean there's a lot of musicians working on cruise ships there are. It's, it's the last passion of full-time employment exactly exactly mm-hmm. for so many musicians this is this and is a lot way. of musicians used to never even consider it but now that a lot of land has dried up on land a lot of work has dried up on land now they're interested in cruise ships and so lots and lots of people want to do it but it's not for everyone Right, because there's a lot of rigmarole that goes with it, and rules you have to follow. And yes, I've had friends who've gotten kicked off of cruise yeah. ships too yeah. <laughs> for bad behavior. Yeah, there's a lot of bad behavior. Yeah, I hear a lot of stories about musicians getting in crazy situations. Yeah, well, you know, there's some wild musicians out there. We're a, mm-hmm. we're a wild bunch, you know. That's right. <laughs> free spirits. <laughs> That's right. Who like to drink free spirits? <laughs> That's right. Oh my gosh, if they're free, they're the best. Yeah, they're pretty cheap anyway on the ship. You. They have what's called the crew bar. It's only for crew members. It's open every night from 6 to 1 in the evening, and drinks are 75 cents or a dollar for a cocktail. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. I was playing on a cruise ship um, with a band like a couple years ago, and uh, we were not like officially part of the crew. Oh, we were like yeah, a right. guest band, yeah. and we tried to go to the crew. You weren't allowed there, I suppose. We got in, but oh. they were quick to tell us that we were not allowed what to What cruise line was that? Um, Norwegian, oh, okay. Norwegian. It went, but it went to um, Nassau. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, did a little Bahama thing. It was great. So Norwegian. Speaking of Norwegian, um, your folks are. My mother was Norwegian. My father was Swedish. That makes me Norwegian. Norwegian. Yeah. Okay. Pure one hundred percent Norwegian. Right. Or yeah, I don't know what the way to say that would be. Um, <laughs> so. Do your pa- were your parents accordion players? I mean, did you? My see father played a little bit just for fun. Okay. My mother's father was a, a, fi- a fiddler who was sort of prominent in the Norwegian community. Uh, I didn't know him because he split when my mother was five years old and went back to Norway for the rest of his life. Whoa, it's far away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you had some music around you growing up. That's what it sounds like, you know. No, not really. I just, um, I just got interested, and my mother gave me lessons on the accordion, and I made my own music. Piano accordion, that's what you started yeah, on. Yeah, piano accordion. Cool. Well, we're getting close towards sort of towards the second half, last quarter of our interview. You know, I don't want to take up too much time, but I would like to maybe. Um, hear another tune of yours and then and then um, maybe chat a little bit and play one together, you know, kind of wrap it up. Okay. You got one more in your back pocket? Um, I should have had this already figured out. Um, no, we like to go, we like to go off the cuff here. Oh, I know. I was thinking of this uh, uh, piece by Astor Piazzolla. Oh, yeah. Where is it? I saw Piazzolla twice perform, once in Paris in a show called Tango Argentino, and then again I saw him in that other great world capital, Ballard. Mm, yes, <laughs> that world capital. World cultural capital, Ballard. He was on tour in 1990 <laughs> with his quintet, and I went to see them at the backstage in Ballard, which I don't think it exists anymore. but. Anyway, it was an amazing performance. They, the place was standing room only, and the, the crowd went nuts. They were shouting for encore after encore. They must have done 10 encores. And then I went up afterwards and chatted with them for a few minutes. And oh, gosh. So anyway, I like his music a lot. I play not a lot of them, but here's one that is one of my favorites. It's called Verano Porteño. Wonderful. Let's see. Thank you. 
Yeah, John. Thank you. Piazzolla. I have one of his, um, I have this DVD of Piazzolla when he played at the Montreux Jazz Festival. And it is. I think I have the same CD. It uh, just sucks you in. Yeah. I mean, I I was hanging out the other day and wa- I was just intending to watch like a tune, like a track off of it. And then the next thing you know, like the video is over and I've watched the whole thing because they're so um the way that they played together was like so captivating and yeah. they're so so tight like they're you know they have all of these like key changes and they have solo sections that are like indefinite amounts of length and when just when you think it's getting super weird everybody like comes in right in the same spot like, they really are all connected and they have phenomenal piano players in his, his yeah i think uh, the, the that on that concert i think it was um uh ziegler pablo ziegler uh-huh. was playing piano and dude was it's super great. It's really a, an amalgamation of tango, classical, and jazz uh-huh. all rolled into one. And just phenomenal technical ability. Yeah. I mean, the violin player in his group, yeah. you know, you never hear the dude play an attitude note. I mean, no matter how high up he is no. on the thing, he's he is crystal clear every single time. It's pretty... It's it's amazing. It's captivating. It is. I have a question um, from one of our members, Dwayne Quenzel. He says... Uh, did we meet? Did you meet Mark Levang at Disney World at all? While you were there, Mark Levang. Maybe there were at the time I was there. This was 1988 through 1994, off and on. It was like the largest concentration of accordion players in the Western world. They had a lot of accordionists there, especially at the Germany Pavilion, but also at Norway, Mexico, uh, Italy. France, there were just lots and lots of them. And then in the mid 2000s, maybe 2005 or so, they, there was like a big bloodbath of uh, firings. They just got like rid of a whole lot of musicians. <laughs> oh, okay. And I don't know how it is now. But I don't remember the name Mark Levang. It sounds like a Norwegian name, Levang. I don't know mm-hmm. if I'm able to discern what a Norwegian name sounds like, but I. Um, I do wonder about uh, in, in just talking about like the how there used to be a lot of musicians working um, what I mean and also accordions um, mm-hmm. are you finding that there's less demand for accordion players out in like this sort of um, entertainment corporate or cruise world yeah yeah I would say so but then then again uh, people in their 20s and 30s now are Telling me how much they love accordion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really amazing. Um, Whereas people my age will still say, "Oh, I hate the accordion." Oh. Yeah, I think there's definitely like a, some mm-hmm. there's some yeah. cool things happening with 
um, stigma and generational stuff that like definitely there's you know working at the shop we see all ages of people yeah. but it's always it's surprising to me like seeing people that are in their 20s early 30s who are just enamored with the yes. accordion yeah. and it's coming back and it's and it's a it's emerging in a sort of a different yeah, way that's exactly right it, yeah. it, you know it used to be accordion schools and like people playing classical music and now it seems like it's more just people like wanting to play the accordion in the same way that they want to play the guitar. Yeah. Like they just want to be able to like be a little bit proficient, mm -hmm. learn a couple of tunes, maybe accompany themselves singing, or there's a rock band that that they like that has accordion yeah. and they want to play their tunes. And so I think there's there's even still though, um, like everybody's gonna like what they like, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Certain people that are really into classical music may feel that the accordion world needs to kind of get get more serious or get into the classical world again I'm or you've got the polka world right i'm not against any of it no um i think wherever it pops up great and wherever it gets support even better but it is um it's a sort of a new it's a new generation of accordionists i think that are going to come up in the next that are coming up now but even i think hopefully continuing in the, like the coming years and too. especially in other parts of the world i've heard that in japan and china accordion is really big in uh, a large segment of the population there yeah i know that like um koba is a japanese accordion mm -hmm. player who's apparently like makes the most money of like any accordion player in the really? world or something oh and he's just like a famous accordion player um and he plays sort of like pop pseudo classical pop kind of stuff and some other things and some kind of a mix of stuff but i was surprised to know that too i knew about china i knew that they had a lot of accordion history there. I had one cruise ship two, three years ago where I was, uh, we were sailing out of China and the company several years ago started adding music lessons, you know, one or two per cruise. First it was ukulele, mm -hmm. then uh, steel drums. And so the, they came up with the idea they wanted me to teach accordion to the Chinese passengers. <laughs> and they bought 20 really awful toy accordions. Oh no. And I had to teach them. Well, it turned out to be a lot of fun. Um, I had to have a translator, though. So that meant that made things take twice as long. And plus, an accordion is really two instruments. So you have to teach one side and then the other side. So that makes it twice as long. And so in 30 minutes, I was able to get halfway through Mary Had a Little Lamb. No, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. That's what it was. Classic. And they actually know that song. They sing it in Chinese. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, it's like, isn't that one like a Mozart melody? Yeah, right. Yeah, so. Yeah. Can you get that guy gets around? So, uh, yeah. China, accordions. Love it. I had something that I was going to, let me see if I have anything. Nope. Yeah, I guess, I guess Mark LeVang still plays for Disney. Yeah. I'll have to ask my friends there if they know. I'm sure they do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, gosh, I had something else. Um, that, so the cruise ship life. Let's talk about that because I, I, we talked about it a little bit. But like, what's your perspective? Do you like it? I mean, you've been doing it a long I time. I like it because I love to travel. I never get tired of traveling, and I've been to so many places I never would have gone otherwise uh, on all all the continents. So, you know, I wasn't particularly interested to go to Australia, or New Zealand. Now I love those places. Oh um, sure. I've been to Hong Kong many times, one of my favorites. I've been to Singapore. I love that place. Uh, Tahiti. I'll be going there for the third time this year, later this year. Um, all over the Mediterranean. I, I just love the, the places that you get to go and see. The, the, the downside is you, they almost never stay overnight anywhere. So mm. you, you're just starting to enjoy the place and you have to be back on the ship at 5 o'clock and uh, sail away. Right. So, but I also enjoy the fact that you meet a lot of uh, interesting passengers and interesting musicians. It's kind of like going to summer camp in a way. You, you, you know, when you work with other musicians, you pr usually on land you only meet them for the day or the time you work with them. But when you're on the ship, you get to know these people over a period of weeks and months, and be some of them become your best friends. Right. You got your your buds. And then you never see them again. That's wild. Well, you might see them, some of them. I have a few I keep in touch with. Facebook, you know? Yeah. That, <laughs> that definitely helps. Cool, but, John. And it's interesting to see how they work, how they do what they do. Oh, the sure. Yeah. Yeah, especially from different 
parts of the world, different types of musicians. It's one of the, mm-hmm. I mean, um, being a musician is a culture in itself that has a lot of diverse diversity and, and sort of like belonging to a brotherhood, a club. Yeah, absolutely. I feel that way. Mm-hmm. I think that like meeting other musicians is one of the things I have, that you I know, really for. good friends I visited in South Africa and Poland, uh, and uh, other parts of America and South America. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad that we were able to meet today. Me too. Hang out, play. I mean, um, it would just worked out perfectly, and we got to hang out on this. It's actually turning into a nice day. You know, you should go enjoy it. Are we still going to play it? Uh, of course. Duet? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so we're going to play a tune, Indifference. I think we're doing it in E minor. I feel uh, indifferent. I feel indifferent towards E minor. Here we go. So it's a little introduction to start out oh, with. Oh, please. Yeah, I'll follow you. Okay. <laughs> John, thanks so much for you, letting me hang I with really you and play this. with you. Thanks everybody to uh, for joining, for for hanging out and watching on this Sunday afternoon. Uh, June is going to be full of a bunch of stuff. I'm going to be all over the place. I'm going to be going to New York for a Fahaw festival to go New play York out there. City. It's going to be great. I'll be posting videos from there. I'm going to be uh, at Silver Falls, Oregon, conducting the camp there and doing a bunch of sweet orchestra arrangements that I just sent out the other day. A little bit late, but they're going to be okay. <laughs> and uh, also going to be at Leavenworth Accordion Festival at the end of the month, too. So if you're going to be there, uh, hit me up and we can talk about accordion stuff. Uh, you can tell me if you have some cool ideas for things that we're going to be doing with the knack or ways that you want to help out or people that you know all that good stuff i will be around and i will be putting out material talking about all these things and featuring people at these festivals so hopefully you're there too 
Um, besides that, just uh, stay tuned and thanks so much again. We'll see you guys again soon. Bye.